experts reply to the sayings that bananas may be harmful if paired with brown food. The Cosby Mountain Rescue Mission will soon be used or pay as the routes be open to the public. Welcome to Die Highlights. I'm Maggie Tsai. Thank you for joining us. Bananas are good for you, but there are internet rumors about the care of eating banana paired with other food items, as it can cause one to grow spots on the face or even be poisoned. How true are these tales? Let's take a look at what experts have to say. Bananas are in season year-round and can be purchased nearly anywhere. At the convenience stores, one can purchase bananas 24 hours a day. Yet there are some rumors about how a banana can be poisonous if you eat it wrong. The rumors going around on the internet states that when a banana is paired with yogurt, it can cause abdominal pain and diarrhea. When it is eaten with potatoes, it can lead skin pigments to darken. Bananas with taro can lead to bloating and even food poisoning. When eaten with cantaloupe, it worsens the symptoms of those with kidney disease and joints inflammation. Currently, the lecture on bananas and these food items when eaten together is that there are no collections to an adverse effect. The banana has much of the nutrition we need in our six major food groups and is a good source of it. The banana's benefits are plenty, including how the fruit has two to three times more potassium than other fruit. As with plenty of potassium in your diet, it can help reduce blood pressure and also quickly replenish your energy. The same 100 grams of bananas, it has five times the magnesium of an apple. Magnesium helps to prevent heart-related problems and helps to relieve fatigue. It is also a good source of dietary fiber to help gastrointestinal motility. One can consume half of a large banana or one whole small banana to meet daily needs. If you are taking medication for high blood pressure or other disease, please consult your doctor before changing your diet. Five native South Africans as you volunteer accompanied by Zhu Hengming, CEO of Tsuji South Africa chapter, and the local senior volunteer Michael Pan visited Malaysia to share their arduous stories of helping out in Africa. As soon as the South African team arrives at Chiji Jinji Hall in Johor Bahru, they are warmly welcomed by Chiji kindergartners. Volunteers in Johor Bahru seize the rare opportunity of having South Africa volunteers to learn from those who have long been involved in poverty relief in Africa. To hug them, making them confident and let them have self-esteem. Having self-esteem is the first step. When they have self-esteem and confidence, they will give up themselves later. The exchange and learning between two countries has opened up volunteers' horizons. And the organizers of this event is a Malaysian businessman doing business in Africa. I noticed that there are not many Chinese in the entire African volunteer team, and those who can travel across countries are even less. But for the black, they are more willing to become volunteers or join the volunteer team, or a lot of them have undergone volunteer training. I think that they really did a difficult job. This is a huge blessing. Let everyone work together. Everyone can imagine that for such a poor country, 500 kilograms of corn flour is all they have in the whole country. Their most basic desire is to continue to live. Malaysian volunteers are aware of the hard life of Malawi survivors. No matter it's the touch huts or skinny children, yet what they admire more is the perseverance and determination of South African volunteers to overcome all difficulties. Because the uh, master, she always tell you that time is very limited. We must use the time that we have. So I remember those teaching that uh, because I've already made a vow that in Africa, even though I feel tired, even though I don't have enough strength, but I continue to do to Chile. After a brief exchange, although the fate of the black continent has not been flipped yet, more people have learned about Africans' plight. In the future, the poverty of Africans can only be changed by bringing together the energy of love and helping out in a timely manner. 
In Malaysia, Tsuji Volunteers in Pat Hong hold free clinics for refugees once every three months, and the free clinics volunteers encourage the refugees to save up to help other less fortunate people. They hope the refugees will learn to turn from receivers to givers. City volunteers hold free clinic in Guantan Bahan once every three months to serve the refugees. There are at least 5,000 refugees on the east coast. However, not as many people come out to seek medical attention. So we hope to continue to inspire people by holding free clinics. We hope to recruit people to volunteer. For instance, children do not fall ill every five or six months. They fall ill every day. Nevertheless, refugees do not have money to see the doctors. We hope to help people every day. At free clinics, when they are waiting to see the doctors, we introduce the bamboo comb banks to them. We ask them to take bamboo coin banks and bless themselves every day. They can put in five cents or a dime and bless themselves. After saving up in the coin bank for two months, they can bring it back and donate it to help other people. We have prepared many recycling baskets for them to sort the recyclables. When they come to free clinics, they can bring recyclables and place them in the baskets. The recycling game is more active and children love it. When playing games, they learn about how to sort recyclables. While safeguarding the health of the refugees, volunteers also encourage them to do good deeds and pass the love forward. In 2018, a hiker surnamed Ye needed a helicopter to rescue him. As a result, the Nanto Fire Department had to pay more than 60,000 U.S. dollars for search and rescue expenses. There are now an average of 200 mountain accidents each year, a tenfold increase from 2004. These mountain rescues are very dangerous and costly, as the concept of user pay will soon be implemented, coinciding with the coming of mountain roads to the public. In November 2019, ambulances from Douphan and Dahu of Miaoli County made a long journey and drove mountain roads for eight and a half hours. They rushed to Mount Dabajin and successfully rescued a mountaineer with altitude sickness. With the opening of mountains and forests, the number of hikers will increase, and it is foreseeable that the search and rescue services of mountain search and rescue team members will also need to multiply in the future. Greaton, Zhuyi, colleagues, please note that the command center dispatched a case and we're going to provide support in Dao. There's a mountain accident in Dao's Jinlun River. There are as many as 268 high mountains, over 3,000 meters in Taiwan. Once a mountain accident occurs, search and rescue personnel must carry 30 to 40 kilograms of search and rescue equipment to walk deep into the mountains. The steep and dangerous mountain areas often put search and rescue personnel in danger when saving people. I remember that the slope was only 400 meters, and we climbed 200 meters. As you walk, you can see a large and small gravel rolling down from above. If you took a wrong step, both you and the stones will roll down the slope. In addition to search and rescue personnel on the ground, helicopter support often comes in handy in mountain accidents, and risks associated with helicopter rescues better than ground search and rescue. None of our tasks are simple. After all, searching and rescuing in mountains is high risk. Once the weather is unstable and you have to do rescue tasks in mountain areas, it can be quite thrilling. My most memorable search and rescue was in Mian Tian Shan Mountain. While our colleague was suspended, I found that because of the wind blowing from the sea on my right side, considerable water vapor had accumulated from morning to afternoon. So the cloud and mist generated very quickly. When we finished and departed, I took a look back and saw the 
whole area covered by clouds. According to statistics from the MOI Fire Department, the average number of mountain area incidents to be rescued each year before 2004 was only nine. In the eight years from 2007 to 2014, there are an average of 185 cases per year. It is expected that after mountain forests are open, mountain rescue cases will continue to increase. In October 2018, a man surnamed Ye climbed the second section of the Central Mountain Range alone. A helicopter was dispatched five times again and again, and he ran away while a rescuer was sleeping. The cost was 60,000 U.S. dollars, and soon a controversy over the use of government resources emerged and whether the government can exempt mountain disasters from national compensation. This was especially important after opening mountain forests to the public. Whether he's right or wrong, we should not use certain rescue costs to punish him. Certain rescue costs should definitely involve insurance. At present, insurance is not related to certain rescue, and it is also the reason why many people are unwilling to buy mountaineering insurance. At present, six counties and cities with high mountains, including Nanto, Taichung, Miaoli, Yilan, Hualien, and Pingdong, have enacted the mountaineering management autonomy regulations. Pingdong County has also formulated the mountain search and rescue management autonomy regulations. At the same time, the executive yuan has implemented the user pay method for mountain rescue search and rescue as soon as 2020. In the past, our search and rescue time was not clearly defined by the number of days. Therefore, we hope that the basic search and rescue days will be set through autonomous regulations to seven days. If you need to search further after this time, we'll ask the family members of the High Court to agree to continue our search to avoid a dispute over rescue costs. In fact, according to statistics from the fire department in 2014, most mountain disasters that were reported included the most common being lost and missing, accounting for 42 percent of all notices. Of the 363 people rescued, up to 65 percent had no injuries, and some believe these rescue services may have been abused. After mountains and forests are open, in the future, people will have more opportunities to climb. In the event of a mountain accident, the best way to save yourself is to bring a GPS positioning device or a smartphone. The more adequate preparation hikers undertake in addition to reducing the occurrence of mountain disasters, it can also reduce criticisms of wasting social resources if they need to be rescued. Malaysia cadets and volunteers hosted two-year embedding ceremonies in different places. Some people brought their bamboo coin banks to give back. There's also a calligrapher who used his talent to spread the goodness and love. People save up the coins to wait for this day. Cadets and volunteers hosted year embedding ceremonies in different locations, and the public all brought back their bamboo coin banks. This bamboo con band I brought with me here every year is to save those in need. Wherever there is a disaster, Gigi is always the first to arrive to save people. We are just giving a little bit of effort. The Dark Calligraphy Association Chairman No Back Key invited everyone to write calligraphy with him. Zhiji's activity is very meaningful to me. The first is that it can promote Chinese cultures. Second, we can do charity at the same time and help the people in need, such as refugees in Africa. The social adaptation and the video of Zhiji's footprints globally all touch the participants' hearts. Seeing the program and video, I felt very touched. Whenever there are area disasters, Gigi always gives a compassionate hand, so I feel that love is all around us. I come to get a master's red envelope of wisdom and blessing, and I feel very joyful because her great love touches me deeply. The red envelope of wisdom and blessings are good wishes from the Jingzi abode in Taiwan. 
It's a symbol to pass down the great love and pray for everlasting goodness in the world. Cixi conducted a year embassy ceremony in Guangzhou, China. Xu Chaoxi, a Cixi care recipient, had not left home after getting hurt in a car accident for over 10 years. However, he came to attend the ceremony to donate his coin bank and to enjoy the festivities. At this year and blessing ceremony in Guangzhou, Cixi volunteers put on the skit to interact with the audience, making them understand recycling with laughter. What I want to tell people today is that I'm a recyclable. I'm proud to be reused and reproduced. This is the extension of the use of goods. This year is the 10th year for Cixi to do recycling in Guangzhou. Volunteers go to different schools to teach everyone about recycling, and they also show these recycled goods by a catwalk. I told them how plastic bottles were turned into threads, and they asked me if they were there on stage, and I said yes. We can turn plastic bottles into all the things we showed on the stage. Chiu Chaoxi is a Cixi care recipient. Even though he is a mobile, he still insists on coming to the ceremony. I've never been here, so I'm happy to be here. It's very comfortable. For over 10 years since the car accident in 2008, my son has never left home. I got the money in the coin bank from my mom. When she sells vegetables, she has a lot of coins. So I put those 10 cents in the coin bank and make a wish every day. Chiu Chaoxi has made a wish to reciprocate the love, which allows him to forget his pain and face a new year bravely. As the Lunar New Year is approaching, Dongguan Cixi volunteers invited care recipients for a reunion. Cixi volunteers in Anping City also held their first winter giving of love. The city is also the hometown of Cixi volunteer Wu Ranyun, the first Cixi volunteer in Venezuela. She has other volunteers to help people in Venezuela. Before dawn, 150 Cixi volunteers arrived at Niujiang Enping with goods. This is the first gift of love in town. I want to thank Cixi that so many people are helping me. Wu Ranyun, the first Cixi volunteer in Venezuela, is from this town. When she returned last year, she noticed many people in town require assistance. Therefore, 114 families would receive love this year. The volunteers go from door to door to spread love. The villagers receive not just the present, but also respect and compassion. At Chongwei village in Dongguan, city volunteers are busy in the kitchen because they must prepare a lot of foods for a reunion meal with 109 city care families from 13 villages. We even arrange vehicles to pick up the care families. There are 15 buses that you have arranged, so I'm very touched. The volunteers take this chance to inform everyone about cutting back their plastic bag usage and eating more vegetarian meals. All the skits are spoken in the local dialect, so the audience can understand them better. The skits are in Cantonese. Local volunteers take on every function. The senior volunteers keep us company. Eating vegetarian meals is beneficial to the environment, and reducing carbon emission is helpful to our lives and our bodies. They are delighted to eat vegetarian meals and also bring home a lot of goods. This year is sure to bring them a lot of joy. Cixi volunteers in Yunnan send winter love to Huizhe County near mountainous area. The people there are living off of agricultural farming and their income is not so stable. Even though it was at low temperature, volunteers did not fear the cold weather and still send winter supplies to the mountain. At near zero degrees, children volunteers in Yunnan go to Huizhe County to send winter love. 
We need to send these items to the hands of our people before Lunar New Year so that they can spend a good holiday together. This is a good event, so we came to do what we should. In addition to the collaboration of the staff from local government, businessmen, college students and community members, as well as 200 others, joined the rank of volunteers. I am a student majoring in social work. As we are helping others, we are helping ourselves as well. We're gaining so much more in return. Through distributing the items to these villagers, I can see their inner joy, which touches me and makes me feel very blessed. Yu Zhongxian, who lives in a small village about 15 kilometers away from Huizhe, brought his two sons to pick up aid supplies. He could not wait until arriving home before putting on his winter coat. I got oil, rice and quilts. I feel very warm and content, just like my clothes, which warms me up. With those items, I can start a good year. <laughs> The ceremony ends in morning, while in the afternoon, volunteers go to different households to care for residents. They brought along handmade hats and scarves, sending warm blessings to the elderly living in the mountain. Putting on hats and scarves, they feel especially warm, also warming our own hearts. It is also a joy to help these difficult people. As long as I can still move and have strength, I will help. Later, if I am old and cannot do it anymore, there is no way for me to contribute. Every blessing sent by TG volunteers is to hope everyone can have a good year. And no matter how hard it is, volunteers are very happy. A TG volunteer, Zhen Raiming, living in Nanchou, is very skillful in creating ants with packing straps. Every ant he creates is very lively. Although he is 67 years old and he has presbyopia, his hands are still very agile, and many people are learning from him. These tiny ants look so real that they all seem to be climbing up the mountain. These 200 ants were made by packing straps, and the smallest one here is only 1.5 centimeters big. The maker of these lively ants is 67-year-old Zhen Weiming. He has pressed by a beer, but his hands are very agile and skillful. A man of his age with such skillful hands is really admirable, because he does it better than women. When I was looking at it, it seemed so easy to make, but it isn't easy when I began making it. Many people are learning the skill from Zhong Weiming. The ant's third leg is here, the width of its leg? Yes, every leg has its size. He teaches with a humor that makes everyone laugh. If you cut it too short, it will look like my body, which is short. It looks like a puppet. An animal of any kind, or even any kind of food, Zhong Weiming is capable of making it from packing straps. I look at it and use my hands to make it with attention. If I'm not attentive, I can't make one. Over 10 years after he retired, he started learning this skill from a dying mother. I asked them questions while they were teaching me. I learned and asked questions, and this was how I learned this. Zhong Weiming said that he experienced many errors, and this is how he became so skillful. A group of housewives in a small town in the Subei province used creativity to make handbags from palm tree sticks. Take a look and there's see you next time.